All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I remembered to put my microphone on today. I don't. Uh, I don't know if you were tuning in uh, last week on Tuesday, but I uh, had my microphone off for the first seven minutes of my project, and Lori was gracious enough to send me a message and say, "We can't hear you." I put my microphone on and I started all over again. And I almost did the same thing today. I'm such a doofus. I almost did the same thing again today. But I didn't. I caught myself. And I am just confirming now that my microphone is on. Uh, As you can see, I've got uh, the Ace of Space album uh, from Wolf and Raven playing right now. I just wanted to pull up the YouTube video to call out Wolf and Raven. Wolf and Raven is my favorite synthwave artist of all time. Absolutely love their music. Uh, I was playing the album Renegades on Tuesday last week. Today we're listening to Ace of Space. Huge fan. Uh, So I just wanted to shout Wolf and Raven out. Wolf and Raven, you guys are awesome. Keep up the great work. Wolf and Raven's music you can check out on YouTube. Definitely recommend subscribing to their channel. Uh, They release music all the time. Uh, They release EPs all the time. A couple of great ones. They're all kind of video game synth rock flavor some of them are a little more synthy some of them are a little bit more rock um all different themes um this is obviously the space theme one the uh the renegades album was kind of the uh gritty 80s urban kind of video game vibe anyway love their music that's gonna be our uh, music for today so a uh, couple of things before we start our project for the day um first of all hope you're all well hope you're all healthy um not going too stir crazy being stuck inside i'm certainly borderline but focusing on some fun productive projects in fusion 360 is keeping me on the uh straight and narrow there and um uh so yeah hope you're all healthy and well um i um completed a 3d print of the project we worked on last time and uh i gotta say it's not perfect but it's pretty darn close so if you recall let's actually pull up the project it is our lever so i wanted to make a lever mechanism with a linkage that opens the lid of a box and i was absolutely tickled pink at how beautifully this came out love it i mean it's totally ridiculous over the top design with absolutely no function but i am absolutely tickled pink by how nice this came out got that kind of steampunky vibe to it i really love the design of the pins so i printed it And of course, because I didn't model the pins with any tolerance, they didn't fit. So some of them broke or just didn't fit together. But with that being said, we have a fully functioning linkage lid lifting mechanism with the lever. How cool is that? How cool is that? Oh, I was so pleased when this came together. So everything, uh, the the pins for the the linkage arms, I did model with tolerance. Um, The pins that were supposed to hold this in place didn't so i could actually pull this linkage arm off if i wanted to but the actual internal pins i left tolerance i think i only left a half a millimeter all around and i mean it works perfectly uh the pins for the hinge i was hammering it and snapped so this will never come apart again and these pins i needed to drill out so anything that we make today that involves hinges and pins, I'm going to try and start being very meticulous about modeling at a minimum 0.5 millimeters of tolerance. I may actually up that to a bit more, but um, because we can always glue things in place if need be, but it's much more of a pain in the butt to uh, um, to uh, you know drill at, drill things out and all that jazz. So anyway, absolutely so pleased with this. Plus it's glow in the dark filament, which is always cool. Um, and in, in assembling our camera mount which i obviously haven't completed um i did have to drill out quite a few of the uh the pins for the hinges so anyway really really pleased with how this came out very cool so i just wanted to share that with you all so i'm gonna go ahead and close that so today our project is um i would like to design a little mechanism that demonstrates how the crank and a piston works in an internal combustion engine I am no mechanical wizard, but I do know a little bit about motors, um, and I think it would be a good experiment to see if I would be capable of making this all work. And it's not going to be anything fancy. It's obviously not going to have any function. Again, it's a challenge for me to figure out if I'm capable of creating this and having it function properly. I thought there was no chance that this was going to work, and this works great. Um, So I'm pretty confident that we should be able to get this done. 
Um, I had started playing with it a bit um, last time, kind of playing with the crank mechanism. I'm going to actually start from scratch um, because I didn't record any of my measurements from last time. I have no idea what the size of anything was. Um, so I, I think we're going to start from scratch and we're going to get this going. Um, and let's, let's get cranking here. So um, let's see. Um, this is a great track. Absolutely love Wolf and Raven. You know, I've been doing all these projects in CAD uh, using Fusion 360, but actually my professional background um, is in music. I was an audio engineer. I play a lot of instruments, uh, but I was an audio engineer by training and by trade for a while. And uh, I, um, you know, worked to manage a recording studio and recorded a lot of music. And, and I did that for a couple of years and, and got out of it. I got a little tired of the audio engineering lifestyle. But at any rate, I'm a big, uh, big music fan and uh, big fan of Wolf and Raven. So shout out to Wolf and Raven for being amazing. So I'm just going to make a bass. Um, I think what we'll end up ha have, we'll end up doing is have the crank mechanism and the piston mounted sideways. Normally it's mounted vertically in an engine. We're going to do it sideways. Um, just because that's how I feel like making it. At some point, maybe we should make it vertically and actually build it with an assembly and all that. But for today, I don't think we're going to do that. So let us, of course, round off our corners as we do. I think I'm going to use circles today. You know, I normally use the arc, but I think I'm going to use circles today. So uh, what that's going to mean is we're not going to use the center diameter circle. I think we're going to use a two-point circle. So I can basically select the two points and it makes a circle for me. That's pretty nice. I should be doing that instead of the arcs going forward. Um, although what I was doing last time was actually putting the arc... This is extending the range of this a bit, the distance of this. I was starting the arc here, so I was cutting some material away. For today, I think we're going to add to it. So basically what I need to do is select these two and just push pull them downwards. Um, and it should be negative five because I made up the height of this five. So now we've got these perfect circular ends. That's, that's good and dandy. That's fine. Okay, very good. So now let's start with the crank. And um, as we discovered last time, what I would have normally done is have a hinge on the outside, the two pieces of the hinge, and then the wheel in the middle, right? So you'd have the hinge and the wheel in the middle. But the problem is, uh, I think the crank would interfere with that unless I put it through the middle and actually that was part of the hinge. But I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to have, let me sketch this really quickly for you. So you can, instead of me trying to haphazardly explain it. Um, I think what I'd like to do is have basically the wheel and then the hinge from that. And then here's the linkage and here's the hand crank. And you have to forgive my drawing skills. So basically we're going to have the hand crank on the opposite end from the linkage to the piston itself. I just feel like making it that way, so it'll make sense as we start to as we start to do this. I have kind of a picture in my head, so um, let's go ahead and get rolling here. So um, what I'm going to do is make the center point where the uh, crank is going to mount. Now, if we quickly bring up the image of a crank, right? So here's an image of a crank. You'll notice it's sort of counterweighted. Um, there's this extra weight here to counterweight the. Um, weight of the crank case and all that so the balance is a bit better i don't really care about that because this is going to be all operated by hand and it's not going very fast so i'm going to make the crank an entire wheel uh not this kind of separated design and i'm going to put the crank on the opposite end of the linkage to the um piston okay um let's go ahead and do that so we'll make a sketch here What do y'all think of Wolf and Raven? If you have a, if you if you like it, throw a comment. Definitely subscribe to their channel. Um, that's going to be probably my go-to music going forward. So, I have a couple of other synthwave bands that I really like, but Wolf and Raven really is the best as far as I'm concerned. They're my favorite. So, we're gonna make this. Let's make it. I think I need to make that bigger. Okay. I'm just thinking. Maybe I'll make this a rectangle. Like this. That works for me. 
And then I think I want the diameter of the wheel to be, I think I wanna make it reasonably big, reasonably big. I think I wanna make it 50 millimeters. So I think we should press pull this 60 millimeters. So we have a little bit of space between the bottom of the um, crank and the, all right, cool. So basically we have some space between the bottom of the crank and the base of this. So, okay, cool. This might be too thick. It's 15 millimeters. Ah, uh, let's go with it. Let's go with it. Uh, I have no idea. I'll probably print this a little smaller anyway. This was scaled down a bit um, just to cut down on the print time. I think I scaled this down to 75%. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. So, okay. So what I want to do now is I want to... Actually, this is way too high. If I want the diameter to be 50, I don't need this to be... That means the entire... Oh, this is way too high. Let's undo that, and we're going to bring it up. Uh, if it's 50, then I will bring this up 30. That's more like it. Ah, uh, make it 40. Totally flying by the seat of my pants here. Anyway. I've, uh, I've had the opportunity to actually work with some pretty cool artists in my days in the uh, the recording studio world. Um, I uh, When I was in college, I interned at the Manhattan Center Production Studio, which is where the Hammerstein Ballroom is in New York City, if anybody's familiar with that. And um, I, uh, I worked there for the summer. I worked there for three summers, I think. Two or three summers. Anyway. Um, they had a pretty cool studio, beautiful studio. Two beautiful studios. One was um, actually designed to look like um, a... That's too big. Let's make it 40. One was actually designed to look like a uh, log cabin. And all of the like wood paneling that looked like the log cabin were all um, uh, diffusers and sound absorption and that kind of thing. Anyway, I had I was an assistant engineer for a mixing session with Duran Duran... Um, I was in the studio when Timbaland was working on some stuff. Really cool, really cool. Um, I was there when they were mixing the um, orchestral recordings of Across the Universe, which was that movie with the Beatles music. Very, very cool. Cool experience. All right, I got to think about this for a second. I made this, I think, 15 by 30. So I basically need to cut a notch out of the center of this, and we're going to make it slightly more than 15 so we have some tolerance. So the way we're going to do that is I'm going to model another circle of the same diameter and um, use it to cut out. We'll do kind of like a Tinkercad style group. All right, so let's see here. So I'm going to make another circle of uh, 20. No, 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 the 50. And then I'm going to make this. If that centerpiece is... Also, this is... This isn't totally a bad spot. Wow, okay. Um, hold on a second. Let's edit this sketch. Uh, let's see if I can move this. Move. Let's move it back to here. I don't know why I put that so far away. All right, there we go. I love using sketches because I didn't have to undo anything. I moved the sketch and Fusion takes care of the rest. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay, anywho, 15 millimeters. Okay, and this I made a height of what? I really need to pay attention. Let's, get, let's figure out what the what the dimensions of this are. Diameter. Twenty-five. Actually, I know there's an easy way to do this. I can just press pull. All right, forty. Okay. So we basically need to subtract fifteen from forty, which is what's is that? Twenty-five. Cool. And actually, let's make it twenty-four. We'll leave a millimeter of tolerance all around. Okay, so let's align these.
align. So we're going to align this with this. Nope. We want this aligned with this. Ah, beautiful. Okay, so now I need to take this body and move it downward to the center point. So I need to move it down. Let's see. If this bottom edge is at 40, I need to move this down. Hmm. I think we need to move it down 40. 28. Oh, Hmm. Why am I getting confused now? Hold on, let me just figure something out here. So, so this is 40. I'm getting confused. So 40 less 15. That's 25. And then we're going to leave a millimeter of tolerance as 24. And, oh, wait a minute. It needs to be 16. That was what was messing me up. Okay. So now I should be able to move this down. Uh, so it should be... Forty minus 12 is... That's it, I think. Oh, wait a second. I messed something up. I totally messed something up. I need to have a hole in the middle of this. Wow. Oh my god, I am. I'm off my Fusion 360 game today. I'm thinking about recording studio stuff. All right, let's see. Okay, now we're in business. Okay, very good. So now we're going to group these together. I'm going to cut. There it is. Beautiful. Now, I did this so wrong. Oh my God, I have to do this over again. What a dope. Oh, I have to do this over again. I need this to be two separate pieces to fit together in here. I mean, I could probably try and have it 3D printed as one piece, but I'm not going to do that. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, let's just shut that off and let's start over. What a dope. Okay. One more time here. We all make mistakes, and I'm making a lot of sloppy ones now. So we're doing this 50, right? And then I'm going to press pull this 12. And then on the center of this, I'm going to create a sketch and do a center point circle. That's going to be a diameter of 20. Eh, 15 is fine. And that's going to come up 16 millimeters. And then we are going to put a hole in the center of this. That is going to be, let's make it, let's make it 10. Nope. That's it. And then we'll have that go down, I don't know, 10. There we are. So that's one side. And now the other side is going to be, we'll sketch that right next to it. Dope, 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 dope. What a dopey move. All right. I was thinking too much about the design and not enough about the construction of it. So, uh, we'll press pull that. What did I press pull this? 12, okay. All right, and then we will make a center point sketch here. I made that 10, so we will make a 10 millimeter circle. And let's press pull that up 10, and then the two should fit together. Great, so this fits in there. That Now we have our little crank wheel okay very good so now what i need to do is i need to figure out where we're going to put the circle part in this so 
Let me just see. That was 40. 40. Hmm. All right, here's what I'll do. I'm going to put these together to make them appear like one um, piece and then kind of get them in place and I'll, I'll, I'll see what this looks like. Okay. The only problem with that is we need to move this or rotate it. Okay, let's try that align again. Okay. Um... Yeah, that, that, that time in the recording studio was uh, very, very fun. I mean, I was there a lot, but it was great. I mean, I got to work with a lot of cool people. I learned a lot from watching, and uh, my boss there was a super, super nice guy. He uh, allowed us to do... Uh, you know, I worked with him on a lot of really cool projects there after hours. You know, we would stay after hours and use the equipment, which we had the per permission to do. I mean, we had access to such incredible audio equipment there. I mean, just hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment. It was just awesome. It was just awesome. So, okay. I wonder if we can align this in some way. Let's align this. So let's try and align this edge with this edge and see what happens. Um, yeah, that, that was, that was, oh. I gotta select both of them. Oh. All right. I would have need to group them. I can group them. No, I'm not gonna group them. I'm just gonna move them. It's fine. We'll just figure this out. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. I have an idea. I don't know why I'm... I'm kind of struggling with this today. Nope. Try again. Huh. That might actually work. Okay. Huh. Oh. All right. It's negative 12. Not looking. Negative. Negative 15. All right. You know what? This is this is so stupid. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with this today. You know, we all have our off days, right? We all have our off days. All right, well, here's what we're gonna do. We are going to try to align this in another way. So we're gonna align the center point here with the center point there. That's much better, okie dokie. Okay, that's much better. This is a great track. That's exactly what I want here. Huh. Okay. Okay, cool. Working, working, working. You know, I'm looking at this now, and these might be too thick. I may squeeze them down a little bit. I'm all off here. This is my first try, so you know what? I'm okay with it. Piston. 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 Good enough. Call it piston. Okay. I hadn't saved yet. If this had crashed and I lost all this work, that would have been frustrating. Okay. I absolutely love this track. I really do. I think it's called machine learning or something, something of the sort. I don't know. It's, it's awesome. Absolutely awesome.
Excellent. Okay. All right, all right. Great track. Okay, that's looking pretty solid. Okay, so now let's take these two. Actually, here's what we're gonna do. Let's see. All right, so I need to make a circle here and I need to make it 16. There it is. Okay, great. And now let's hide this. And now I can just push this straight through. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Oh my goodness. We got a flywheel or a uh, crank, not a flywheel. All right, cool. All right, so that is awesome. I'm very pleased with that. I think that's gonna work. So basically what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have a crank somewhere, like a knob that you can hold on to with your hand. Huh. I think something's wrong with this design. Uh, oh. Yep, something's probably off with this. Also, I am gonna push these in just so I have a little more room to work with. So let's have them in. There we go. All right. So let's work on the, the linkage to our piston. Okay, so what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna make a hole straight through this. Hmm. A hole straight through this because I want the linkage arms to basically come here and here. Right, and when this turns, the linkage arm will rotate around the outside, basically pulling the piston out and pushing it back in. So let's let's make a hole. The thing is, I'm not going to have anything go all the way through. I think it's only going to come in. Well, let's make a hole all the way through. Let's just get started. Let's try. All we can do is try, right? That's all we can do. So let's make a hole five millimeters in diameter. Okay, let's see what happens here. Right, okay, so now we've got this hole, right? And what's gonna happen here is I am going to model an arm. I'm gonna have it come straight out. Huh, I don't know, I don't know, I have no idea. No idea what I'm doing here. But we're gonna make it work. We're gonna make it work. Okay, so I made that five. I should actually go back and make it six and that way I can make the yeah you know, I'm gonna do the millimeter of tolerance so everything fits well okay okay very good all right so all right let's create a new sketch over here After I worked at that studio in Manhattan, um, I uh, I started managing a studio on Long Island that was really, really cool. It was a small studio, but uh, I'll tell you, it was um, it was really, really fun. I mean, it was. Uh, It was built by John Stork, who is a legendary studio designer. Um, 
and it was built at the same time as Electric Lady in Manhattan, which was Jimi Hendrix's studio. And um, it had the same aesthetic. It was originally Tommy Mottola's studio that he, did, he used to um, basically start to find talent, as I understand. Um, and then it was closed for quite a while. Um, and then it was reopened by my boss at the time uh, in, I guess, the 90s. And uh, he had a heart attack and had to have surgery and um, closed the studio down for a while and then reopened it and basically brought me on to sort of help revitalize it. Unfortunately, that was uh, during the summer of... Whoa, what the heck did I just do? That was during the summer of 2008 when we had our financial problems in this country and... Um, not a lot of people had money for studio time. So while it was an incredibly nice studio, um, I did not um, have the opportunity to uh, work with a lot of really cool artists. I did work with a few pretty cool artists, but um, you know it was mostly like high school bands doing their thing, and you know that's fine. But that was you know it was whoa. That's really interesting. Why is that happening? All right, I'm going to just make a sketch then on this face. It's fine. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was the the studio was very very nice. I mean, I uh, nope. There we go. That'll work. Um, it had really, really nice gear. I mean, nothing like what I had at, uh, wait a minute. I think I'm going about this the wrong way. Let's go back to that other design for a second. Huh. I don't think this is going to work. Huh. I don't think this is going to work. I don't think this is going to work, but... That's okay. That's okay. You know what? I'm going to go with it. I want to see how it turns out. I, don't, I think the design is wrong because I don't understand exactly how these mechanisms work. And you know what? That's okay. It's not going to work. That's okay. It's okay. This is... Uh, uh, it's a good example of a, a failure and a, and a learning experience, right? That's okay. Okay. Nope. Definitely not exactly what I had in mind, but I'll probably do it again. I'll, I'll try it again. I'm going to continue on this path here that I'm on, um, and we will just try and do it again on Thursday. That's all. That's all. This one is going to be an iterative process for sure, because I don't know what I'm doing, and I didn't take the time to learn about what I'm doing, which I should have done. I just jumped into Fusion 360 all willy-nilly. And now I am suffering the consequences. Okay. Okay. All right. I really, this is like really far apart, but that's okay. I actually think I need to make these both shorter. Let's push pull these inward. No, that's too much. Okay, cool. So now.
Let's make a six millimeter circle. Okay, great. So there we go. All right, now. Huh. So the idea is this turns, which brings this arm down, and there'll be a linkage here. Hmm. Right? So as this turns, these will be able to rotate freely like hinges, and they'll basically go around, which will pull these, effectively pull these bars in and out. Oh, this is terrible. I totally did this incorrectly. But maybe I can save this. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Ah, we might be able to salvage this. We might be able to salvage this, my friends. Okay. Let's do this. I think I made the thickness of this five. So let's press this in negative three and then Okay, so I think I might have to do a little bit more. See, now I'm a little worried. All right, let's do this then. Okay. We're going to... So two. Two. And then make this eight. Why is that doing that? That's very strange. Huh. All right, hold on. Let me undo this. All right, let's see. Let's move this out this direction. Okay, and then we'll do the same with this. Okay. And actually, what we're going to need to do then... Oh, what? Oh, I went the wrong direction. That's fine. There we are. Okay, so... Once again, this is being super weird. I don't get it. All right, it's fine. Here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to make a new sketch. I don't I don't know what's going on with this today. It's okay. We're going to figure it out. 15 There we are. Okay. All right. So, what I'm going to do now is it's negative six zero. What the heck? So strange. What is going on with this today? I 
don't get this at all. I'm perplexed. And it's all because I did not take my time to figure out what I'm doing. All right. I should be able to just press pull this face. Modify selected geometry using offset extrude. Can I use extrude? What is going on here? Let's try extrude. There we go. Ugh. What a pain. Four. And we'll do the same on this side. Repeat extrude. All right. Okay. Great. All right. Now, now that that's fixed. Oh, that was annoying. Sorry about that. I'm bumbling more than normal today. Um, yeah, no, I really had no, I had no idea what I was doing today. This is obviously pressing my skills and it goes to show you how much you need to be prepared. Okay. So now we can take this. Okay. Now we are talking. Okay, good. Great song. Absolutely awesome. Okay, cool. I feel a little bit better about this now. I feel a little better about this. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now... What I'll do, actually, I think... Let me see if I can maybe extrude these pins. I'm not even going to use press-pull because that was... I guess press-pull... I always assume that press-pull... Um, Uh, press pull was extrude, but I guess it also includes offset face. And uh, let me just take a quick look here. Like if we go to press pull, it says modifies the selected drum, drum using offset extrude or fillet commands. And it depends on the geometry selected. So it can, it's interchangeable between those. And that is something I did not know. So that's very interesting. All right, well, I learned something new today um, that is immensely helpful. All right. What I'm doing now is I'm just designing some pins to hold these in place. Okay. Use my usual hinged pin design, the one I've been doing for weeks. Oh, man. I'm really frustrated that I... Um, messed this up so badly. I thought I thought through this well, but I clearly didn't. Okay. Obviously, this is nothing fancy, but... Okay. So, we're gonna make pins that are three millimeters and five millimeters height. Actually, let's be smart and make it 2.5 so that we have some tolerance. All right, and we'll make it five. And then we're going to sketch this. And we will make this six. And let's pull this up. Three. Nope, we'll do two. Hello, there we go. 
Press pull, two millimeters, and then we'll do our usual fillet. Two. Nope, I don't want it completely round. I like them kind of flat like that. Okay, cool. So we've got these pins, and I'm going to put these into place in one second. So um, let's do that now. My experience with um, being interested in music interested in music technology is actually directly related to the um, conception of the DAE. I mean, when I was a kid in the 90s, I started playing music when I was um, like six or seven, probably like seven. And um, I uh, originally was just interested in playing, but I eventually became really interested in music technology. And, um, you know, as a kid in the 90s, I mean, I, I can think of... Awesome. I can think of, um, you know, being in sixth or seventh grade, right? And that was when I started... You know, I, I, I learned a lot of instruments, but um, that was when I started taking playing guitar a little bit more seriously. And... Um, you know, I um, I got really interested in the music technology, the tech side of things. I was always interested in computers and, um, you know, video games and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, for me as a kid interested in music technology, basically all my only option was to read audio magazines, right? And that's really it because there was no garage band. There was no laptop with audio software pre-installed. I mean, that didn't exist, right? That was that was unheard of. I mean, to have a home recording set set up, you would have needed to have spent, um, you know, thousands of dollars on a tower, and you needed an interface that needed a PCI card because computers weren't powerful enough to process audio then. You needed to actually have a, a card that handled the the actual processing of the audio. Um, and um, let's just save this. I'm going to make the crank now. Um, and uh, so in order to, to like experiment with, you know, um, recording technology, I had to basically use a Tascam for track. I'll show you what it looked like. It was. Uh, these are even fancier than the one I had for track cassette. Let's see. Uh, these are even fancier than the one I had. I I, I had uh, Tascam four track cassette. Let's see if I can find this. I actually still have it. Um, now it's none of these. It was simpler than this. It basically had one, had four little volume sliders and a pan knob, and that was it. And basically, I could record four tracks on a cassette recorder. And uh, it had a little built-in mic and a quarter-inch input, and that was it. I mean, and this was that was fancy for for those days for you know for me to have, um, uh, and that was it. So you know, uh, my only option to start to become more serious about learning audio was um, to you know intern at studios. But being like 13 and interning at a studio basically meant you know making coffee and and uh, you know running errands and that kind of thing. So. You know, it wasn't really until I was in college that I got to, um, you know, start to explore professional technology. And, you know, after I left the music business, I uh, was sort of pondering on that. And, um, you know, the I had some friends with similar experiences in different things, not necessarily audio, but maybe, you know, things like... Uh, uh, welding and that kind of thing. I had a good friend who was super interested in welding. And, um, you know, uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm doing all this. I hate this. I'm not going to work on that right now. Um, and uh, basically, the idea came about why is there no place for kids to explore cool tech in a like fun, safe environment at a young age? And that was the original idea of the DA. Um, so... Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, um, it was, uh, 
it was tough, you know, being interested as a kid and really wanting to pursue this and just having no no outlet. I mean, these days, you know, you have a Mac laptop, you get GarageBand, you get Logic Pro. I mean, you have a full studio basically there. I mean, obviously, for electronic music, you know, it doesn't come with microphones and that kind of thing. But at any rate, so there's a little story there. I'm going to make the pins for the, uh, the other end of this linkage here. And uh, we'll go from there. The other thing I think I might do is I think I want to round some of this stuff off. Um, I think that's going to be helpful. So let me... I think I want to. I think I want to round some of these off. I I, I just I'm being. Let's see. Okay, cool. All right, I'm just gonna do a three point arc here to round these off. That that's all. Let's kind of go like this. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I want to do. What, am I not sketching on the right surface? What the heck? Hold on a sec. I don't know what I just did. I was sketched on the wrong surface, I guess. Um... See if this works correctly. All right, let's see. What the? Oh, oh, there's this. All right, that can go. Let's just delete that all together. Okay, cool. Delete this. There we are. All right, cool. So let's do the same on the other side. Why did this not work? There we are. Okay. Perfect. Oh, I had sketched on... Oh, I'm so stupid. I had sketched that already. All right, cool. Um, I also want to do that with this. So let's shut this, 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 and this, and this off. All right, I want to do the same thing. I want to round this off, which is questionable given the small amount of material there is here. So poorly thought out. We're going to do this again. We're going we're gonna to definitely do this project again. Although I think that should be okay. I think that should be okay. That should be fine. All right, let's see. That should be fine. How are we doing on time here? Oh my God, we're almost out of time here. Okay. Um, you know, the other thing is we're gonna need some spacers. Okay. All right. Before I'm not even going to start working on the piston today. So the one challenge is right now, the way that this is designed, these two circles would be able to slide back and forth really easily. I need some spacers in here to prevent too much side to side motion. So I think, wait a minute. This can't, this, this doesn't work either. This design doesn't work. This design doesn't work. This design doesn't work at all. All right. Because what's going to happen is as this rotates, these are going to come underneath these sections and then when it comes back around it's going to make contact with this so this is a complete failure however we might be able to save this though hold on a sec hmm
I am not on my game today, clearly. Yeah, it's not gonna work at all. Totally, totally poor design. Not gonna work at all. On the outside, it would have worked. If I had kept that same design on the outside, it would have worked. But putting it on the inside does not work. So, here's what I think we can do. Let's get rid of this, and this, and this, and this, and this. These are grouped together. Oh, that's not good either. Let's switch back to this here. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. It needs to be offset, right? So one side is the crankshaft and then the connecting rod is on the other side. Yeah, like this. See how they're offset? Hmm. Yeah, so I am going to say that this is a total failure, and we're going to start this project over again. Here's another good example. See how this, the crankshaft, and then the connection is on the other side of it? I am such a dope that I messed that up, but that's okay. I'm, I'm going to... I am going to figure this out. So, all right, so we're going to call this scrapped. And uh, I think... I think what I... I might be able to save this, but I think I'm going to start from scratch next time. But basically what I think we're going to do is have a, cr a hand crank on one side. Actually, this is still salvageable, I think. If we can put the hand crank on one side and then this crank arm on the other side, on the outside... So you basically hand crank one side and the other side turns a single a single linkage arm, right? So think of it like this. We have the two linkage arms. But if I take one of the linkage arms off, let's see if I can take it off. It's a tight fit. Well, so it's disconnected right now. The box mechanism still works with the single linkage arm, right? So we're gonna basically have the single linkage arm on the outside all right, this is salvageable. I take it back. This is salvageable. I'm just, I just did not think about this the right way. So we're going to try and save this design next time. We will do our best. Um, anyway, thanks so much for bearing with me. This was, uh, my mind is in knots right now, but we're going to get this right next time. Um, so Thursday, um, we will attempt to recreate this with the uh, linkage arm on one side on the outside so it doesn't get impeded and then some kind of crank mechanism that'll be a hand crank on the other side and then we'll figure out uh, the piston. I think what we'll probably do for the piston is have some kind of tube like if you look at um, the engine obviously the piston is in this little enclosure here right it needs to fit totally flush here's another good picture right so the piston is in this uh, in this enclosure here right so uh, there's a joint here, there's a joint here from the crankshaft, the piston moves up and down, and then the crankshaft rotates freely around this circular spot here. So what we'll do next time is we'll probably design some kind of, um, like tube that receives the piston. So the piston stays in one single plane of motion, and then, uh, the linkage arm can rotate freely around that. Anyway, uh, we'll see how we do with that. This is probably going to be a multi-part project. Uh, not sure if I'm going to scrap this or not. I might, and we may start from scratch. But at any rate, um, thank you very much for tuning in and bearing with me, uh, listening to my stories today. Um, as always, please hit subscribe if you like these videos. We do two project streams like this every day at 10 and 2. Also, I release a tech tip of the day every day at noon. Lots of cool advice on apps to use and fun games to play and all kinds of different things. Um, so definitely hit subscribe if you like it. Um, definitely throw a comment uh, if you have any tips on how I can improve my Fusion 360 skills because there is a lot to improve. Um, and check out the DAE.com if you'd like to book a private lesson or check out our online workshops. And I thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you in the next project stream on Thursday. Have a nice day.